Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to Daily Newspaper Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 23rd October 2024. These are the three important articles we are going to discuss today. The first article is about Commonwealth Games and Commonwealth Nations. The second article is about Line of Actual Control, which is a dispute between India and China. The third article is about the Conference of Parties for Convention on Biological Diversity. So, these are the three important articles we are going to discuss in this video. Let us get into the discussion. Now, look at this article. 2024 BRICS Summit, which is the 16th BRICS Summit, is going to happen in Kazan city in Russia. In this BRICS meeting, India and China will discuss about the resolution of LAC issues. LAC here is line of actual control. It is a critical and sensitive boundary between India and China. It is roughly about 3488 kilometers long. LAC is not a formal international border. It is just a demarcation line between the Indian controlled territory and Chinese controlled regions. So, the boundary remains contested and leads to frequent military standoffs. So, in this context, let us discuss about LAC, the line of actual control. Now, look at the map here. This is a LAC region. Here, the Akshay Chin is controlled by China and the Ladakh is controlled by India and this line is a LAC. Now, let us see what are the causes for this dispute. British era agreements was one of the major causes. During British rule in India, several border agreements were made with Tibet. For example, the Magmohan Line of 1914, which separates Arunachal Pradesh from the Tibet, is a key aspect of the dispute. China refuses to recognize this boundary in the eastern sector. Next about the 1962 Sino-Indian War. After India's independence, the tension escalated, which resulted in Sino-Indian War in 1962. The China seized the control of Akshay Chin, which is a region in the western sector, that India claims to be part of Ladakh. So, this 1962 Sino-Indian War solidified the territorial disagreement. China retained the control over Akshay Chin and India administered the Arunachal Pradesh. So, this 1962 war escalated the conflicts. Then about the ambiguities in line of actual control. See, LAC is not officially demarcated international border. Both India and China have different perspective about the exact alignment of LAC. So, this has led to several disputes and military standoffs. The patrolling from both sides often encounter such grey zones which result in confrontation. So, this is about the origin and the development of dispute in LAC. Now, let us see about the zones of dispute. Firstly, the western sector, it has Akshay Chin in one side and Ladakh on other side. The line of actual control passes through this region. So, the key disputed area here is Akshay Chin which is a high altitude desert which is under the Chinese control but claimed by India. The Galwan Valley Pangangso Lake, Despang Plains and Hot Springs have been repeated military face-offs. So, in this region, there was a face-off during 2020 and Akshay Chin is critical for China as it links it Xinjiang region with the Tibet. For India, it is important for infrastructure development in Ladakh. So, both countries claim Akshay Chin and the dispute has not yet been resolved. Now, let us see about the middle sector which is Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. This sector is relatively calm compared to other sectors. This area Barahoti in Uttarakhand sees periodic tensions. Though minor fights occur here, but both sides generally respect the LAC in this region more than other sectors. So, this is the middle sector which is in Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. And this is the western sector which you have seen already. It is between Ladakh and Akshay Chin. Now, let us see about the eastern sector. Here, the China claims Arunachal Pradesh as a part of southern Tibet, while India maintains the integral part of its territory. The Tawang region is particularly sensitive due to its religious significance in Tibetan Buddhism and the proximity to Bhutan. So, to the north of Arunachal Pradesh and Bhutan lies the Tawang region of Tibet. This sector is highly significant for India due to its geographical and cultural links to Tibet and this makes any potential Chinese advances particularly concerning. So, the eastern sector also faces high tensions in several years. Now, let us see about the current status of LAC. The differing perspective of LAC by both China and India lead to regular military face-off such as the Galwan Valley clash in 2020 and it resulted in casualties on both sides. So, this is the first such incident in last decade. Both the nations have engaged in rapid infrastructure development near LAC. China has been building roads, airstrips and military bases and India also developing infrastructure along LAC. India's development in Ladakh has led to acquisition from China. China accuses that India is militarizing the region while India views China's infrastructure as a threat. So, both countries are equally developing the infrastructure on the both sides of LAC. So, the main problem here is a trust deficit and nationalism. The diplomatic efforts aims to resolve the border issue has been hampered by 
the lack of trust between two nations. The domestic pressures and nationalist sentiments in both countries make compromises very difficult. So, this is the current status of LAC and let us hope this issue is currently resolved in the ongoing BRIC summit in Russia. Now, let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. With reference to India-China boundary issue, consider the following statements. The line of actual control refers to demarcated boundary line between India and China. The statement is obviously incorrect. As we have seen, it is a non-democrated boundary line, which is not internationally accepted line. So, the first statement is wrong. The LAC is divided into three sectors, western, middle and eastern sector. Yes, this is correct. The Galwan Valley incident of 2020 occurred in the eastern sector of LAC. Yes, this statement is incorrect because it occurred in the northern sector near Akshay Chin. So, here only the option 2 is correct. So, the correct answer is option D. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now, look at this article. It discusses the 16th Conference of Parties. That is the 16th COP which is going to be held in Cali in Colombia. The 16th Conference of Parties to Convention on Biological Diversity is aiming to address the global biodiversity and ecosystem restoration. There was already a 30 into 30 goal which aims to protect the 30 percentage of world's land and waters by 2030. So, in this context, let us discuss the basics of the Conference of Parties of Convention on Biodiversity. The Convention on Biological Diversity that is a CBD is an international agreement to conserve the world's biological diversity. It was created to ensure that ecosystem especially the species of animals and plants and the genetic diversity are protected and used sustainably. It was initially adopted in 1992 during the Rio Earth Summit. It recognized the need to stop the rapid loss of biodiversity due to the human activities like deforestation, pollution and climate change. Now, what are the objectives of this Convention on Biological Diversity? The first objective is the conservation of biodiversity. The next one is sustainable use of its components that is the plants and animals and the genetic diversity. Then the third one is the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the genetic resources. So, this is the objectives of Convention on Biological Diversity. Now, what is the Conference of Parties in Convention of Biological Diversity? The Conference of Parties which is a COP is a main governing body of Convention on Biodiversity. It is where the member countries meet regularly to discuss the progress and future plans. The role of COP is to set a new global biodiversity target. It also monitors the progress and address the emerging challenges. So, this is about the conference of parties regarding the convention on biological diversity. The COP meetings are held every two years which brings together the representatives from all countries that are part of convention on biological diversity. So, it happens every two years and not every year. Now, what are the key outcomes of this year COP 16 which is held in Cali in Colombia? The first one is the review of Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Network. So, what is this? The country is focused on aligning their national biodiversity strategies and action plans with the targets which are set at Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. So, this aims to track the progress in biodiversity restoration and conservation efforts and the main focus is on 30 into 30 initiative. As I said earlier, the 30 into 30 initiative is the one that seeks to protect the 30 percentage of land and oceans by 2030. The next one is biosafety under Cartagena protocol. The discussions are going on enhancing the biosafety measures. The biosafety which is concerning the genetic resources of organisms which are modified and when they are used across the borders that creates a risk of biosafety. So, the Cartagena protocol is regarding the biosafety of the genetically modified organisms. Then Nagoya protocol and genetic resources. It is about strengthening the equitable sharing of benefits from the use of genetic resources. It also focuses on indigenous communities and local populations. The next about the financial mechanisms. The revision of biodiversity financing especially the need for financial support to meet the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. So, as I have said earlier the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework is about the 30 into 30 target of protecting the 30 percentage of land and ocean by 2030. So, there is a need to create 200 billion dollars annually by 2030 to meet this production. Then lastly about the indigenous participation. There is a strong focus on ensuring the indigenous and local community participation in biodiversity production. Since this year's COP is happening in Colombia which is also a part of South American Greater Amazon Forest and has a rich diversity of forest and wild animals, there is a strong focus on ensuring the indigenous and local community participation. The discussions are also going on to protect the high seas 
aiming to bring more areas under marine jurisdiction into protected status. So, this is about the this year COP 16 which is happening in Colombia. Now, let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. Which of the following statement is correct regarding the conference of parties to convention on biological diversity? The Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework was adopted at COP 16. This statement is incorrect because it was already adopted in the previous COP and not during this COP 16 because COP 16 is only happening in 2024 and this Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework was signed in 2022. Now, look at the second statement, COP16 emphasized the protection of at least 30 percentage of world's land and ocean areas by 2030. Yes, this statement is correct. The Nagoya protocol which is discussed at COP16 deals with the fair and equitable sharing of genetic resources. Yes, this statement is also correct. So, the correct answer is option B, 2 and 3 only because the first statement is incorrect. With this, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this article, it talks about the 2026 Commonwealth Games. The 2026 Commonwealth Games is going to be held in Glasgow in England and it will see the exclusion of 9 sports that have historically been successful for India. The sports like wrestling, shooting and archery have been contributed to significantly for India's medal tally. But the 2026 Commonwealth Games is going to exclude these sports from the games. So this is a major concern for India. In this context, let us discuss about the basics of Commonwealth in our article discussion. See, Commonwealth Games is an international multi-sport event which involves athletes from Commonwealth group of nations. See, Commonwealth nations is simply referred to as Commonwealth and it is a political association of 56 member countries. And most of these countries were formerly the territories of British Empire. So, these 56 countries spans across Africa, Asia, Americas, Europe and Pacific. Now, look at this map from Canada to Australia, New Zealand, India, Pakistan and African nations. They are all part of Commonwealth group of nations. Now, let us see about the formation of Commonwealth. See, in 1926, a Balfour Declaration was formally recognized, the autonomy of dominions. The dominions means the self-governing nations within the British Empire. The first dominions were Canada, Australia and New Zealand. Then in 1931, the statue of Westminster was created. So, this statue of Westminster further established the legal independence of the dominions. So, these dominions thereby joined a group of nations called Commonwealth. The modern Commonwealth was officially formed only after World War II. This is particularly after India's independence in 1947. Then there is a London Declaration in 1949. It allowed India to remain a member of Commonwealth even after becoming a Republican country. So, this London Declaration in 1949 allowed many countries to join the Commonwealth even after becoming republics. So, this recognized the British monarch as a symbolic head of the association. This does not mean India have to sacrifice its integrity or sovereignty or independence. So, this is just a symbolic association with a symbolic head. Now, let us see what is the contemporary relevance of Commonwealth. See, Commonwealth provides a platform for small and developing nations to voice out the concerns on global stage. It also involves in conflict resolution and human rights advocacy. Commonwealth also plays important role in development and trade initiatives. See, Commonwealth continues to foster the economic and technical cooperation between the member nations. So, these are the important contemporary relevance of Commonwealth. Now, what is the eligibility of a country to join the Commonwealth? Let us see. In order to become a member of Commonwealth, a country must adhere to the core values of democracy, human rights and rule of law. So, the membership for Commonwealth is voluntary and open to all the British territories who are former colonies of British. But the countries who are not the former colonies of British can also join the Commonwealth nations. So, this is an important thing to note here. Even the countries who are not former colonies of British Empire can also join the Commonwealth. For example, Mozambique and Rwanda are not former British colonies, but they are also part of Commonwealth nations. With this, let us see the structure and governance of Commonwealth nation. Regarding the structural part, there are three important organizations. First one is Commonwealth Secretariat. It is a primary body and it is a powerful body responsible for executing the Commonwealth initiatives. The next one is Commonwealth Head of Government Meeting. It is where the head of governments of all nations who are member of Commonwealth meet together for every two years. So, the presidents or prime ministers of all the member countries meet together for every two years. So, this Commonwealth Head of Government Meeting is like conference of parties. The third structural part is Commonwealth Ministerial Action Group. This ministerial action group has powers to take action on the member countries who do not follow the Commonwealth Charter or Commonwealth Ideals. For example, Pakistan was banned from Commonwealth in 1999 and later it was inducted back in 2004. 
So these are the three important structural part of common wealth nations. With this, let us conclude the discussion. Let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. So which of the following countries are last to join the Commonwealth nation? The answer is B, Gabon and Togo. These two countries joined the Commonwealth nation only in 2022, that is two years back. With this, let us conclude the discussion. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Shankaraya's Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.